Good afternoon and welcome back to Rocket Rackers TV for the second match today of this Money Match Day, March 2022. Today we've got Simon Flaxman, a seasoned veteran of Rocket Rackers TV, versus Josh Barnes. And it's his first match on the stream and first match with us at Rocket Rackers TV today. So we welcome Josh to the stream. Today's match between the two is a race to 17 for £400. It says £200 there. That's wrong. I'm going to have to change that. Sorry about that. I'm supposed to say £400. But anyway, we'll have a quick rundown. Oh, of the we've got another commentator coming in. We've got Simon Ayers on the way. Uh, yeah, today, this afternoon session has Ben Lindsay versus Darren Daniels, Danny Butler versus Ryan Watts, Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes, Ben Mills versus Matthew Richardson, Jamie Close versus Gary Sefton, Luke Cross versus Daniel Baird, and Stephen Wonder versus Mark Montague. Today's beneficiary is PDSA, Public Dispensary for Saving Animals. If you're looking for a cause to support, please support them. They help families on low income keep their animals going. We are live at Rocket Ronnie's in Southampton with over 30 tables of various disciplines to play on. We've got dartboards and BT Sports on six TVs plus a live projector screen. They're open Monday to Saturday, 10 till midnight, and Sunday, 10 till 10. No memberships required, so pop down and play. 
Our next scheduled stream, well, isn't showing right now, but it is Ben Lindsay versus Matthew Harrison. That's on the 3rd of April. We'll try and get you a stream before then. But in the meantime, our stream sponsor today is QL Q Sports, providing snooker and pool coaching in Southampton. If you're looking to level up your game or the game of your juniors, then please get in touch with QL Q Sports today. We are nearly ready for the match. I will just go over to the match overview there. I'm going to go and update a thing or two. But in the meantime, we've got Simon Ayers on the mic. Simon, welcome. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. All good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Thank you. How was the uh, morning match? I didn't get to see very much of it. Oh, it was a fantastic match. Um, all the way up to 11-11, it looked like it go could go all the way to the very end. But um, unfortunately, Neil came back stronger from the interval than Jack did. And um, yeah, he was just able to start opening up a bit of a lead there. So um, yeah, maybe not totally fair the scoreline, 21-15 to Neil, but it is what it is. And that's generally what happens by the end of the matches isn't it one player will eventually pull away from the other yeah it's very common so uh, was it was it quite open game or was it quite cagey I saw a couple of frames and it seemed a little yeah bit, I mean there was a little bit tight Neil was definitely playing more into the um, safety game than Jack was but um, yeah there was lots of lots of dishes around the middle of the match certainly and then it got a bit cagier towards the end but yeah, overall, a, uh, it was it was definitely very entertaining to watch. So I'm just setting up a lot of things here. I had a very small interval between finishing the last match and setting up for this one. So I think we've got every all the bits and bobs ready now. I'll just signal to the players that we're ready to lag for the break. They haven't seen it just yet. They're just getting their bearings. This should be quite an interesting match. I've never seen Josh Barnes before. No, it's his first time on Rocket Rackers TV. Yeah, so I've seen he, um, I think he plays in one of the Premier League snooker teams. Oh, okay. But um, I've never seen him before, so it'll be quite interesting. Obviously, must fancy the job if he's challenging Mr. Flaxman, as we know, is a very good player. Yeah, he's more than competent. <laughs> Take a little quick picture for posterity there. Let our fans on Facebook know that we are ready to go. If we have any, I'm sure we do. We've got a few people tuned in now. I know it's not the heights of the last match, but this will be a very entertaining pool match indeed. Yeah, so I would say, have you got any predictions? But I guess you, you probably don't know Josh either. <laughs> no, no, exactly. A complete wild card. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if he's a if he's an actual pool player or if he's just a not say just, but if he's purely a snooker player who's kind of chancing his arm a bit. Hmm. So we'll see. Yep, and we are ready to go when our players are. We'll go over to the uh, lag for break. No, we got we've got Simon Flaxman on the yellow, and Josh Barnes on the red. The yellow looks tight there, and just about takes it. That's Simon Flaxman will take the break. So you're going to be busy yourself soon, aren't you? In a nine ball competition, was it? You'll join in. Uh, well. I'm actually playing in an IPA English pool tournament next weekend. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. Uh, but I've got the uh, nine ball tournament on the 15th of April, I think. Hmm. GB9, so I've got a couple of weeks off. It's a bit of a weird one, really, because um, I entered the IPA stuff. And then uh, I'm not really at into English pool. <laughs> like, I like it, but not as much as, like, snooker and nine ball. So since the nine ball stuff's kicked off again, I kind of going to be playing this IPA event but I've got like no enthusiasm or interest in it at all right now so mm. I need to try and motivate myself in the next week 
Well, this is frame one in this race to 17 for 400 pounds. That's Simon Flaxman breaking. <laughs> Shouldn't have brushed it, he said. <laughs> Should have left the table as it was. Yeah, we find that uh, early in the matches. Maybe it's the brushing that does it, but early in the matches, you really struggle to get anything other than a dry break. Here we go, first look at uh, Josh then, be interesting. And Josh said before the match, he's a high octane, very fast player. Yeah, I've already got that from the first couple of shots. <laughs> <laughs> he's not hanging around. So it should be an interesting match, this one. And I've corrected the... Uh, no, I haven't corrected the stake there. Let me let me sort that out. Sorry about that. It's not a £400 stake, £200 prize pot. That would be some sort of bizarro universe where money disappears. Look at this. Josh is straight out of the traps. Looking pretty confident. He's like a, a hare with a late video to Blockbusters. He's charging down. This is a good shot to get on the last red. This is going to try and leave a gap between the yellow and black. Yeah, it's just yeah, the problem with that being so um, acute angle to that middle is you can't really put any power into it. Well, he was trying to use tons of left-hand side to spin the white down the table, but... Mm. It's a little bit bananas the way he played that. <laughs> like I think, um, well, I guess I guess he's just so confident. But yeah, that was um, that needed a bit more care and attention to play that shot than the way he played it. I think. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure we're going to see that from Josh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll see how the match goes. So what's he looking at? I think he's looking at playing the yellow bottom left, killing the white, and being straight on the one under the black. Touching. Oh no, he's nudging the red out of the way. Mm, that's okay. He's not got the nicest angle on this yellow though. I think he might have to might have to sort of kind of pot it and just kind of screw back out through the gap and just leave one of the other ones up table. Or he might play one of the ones up table now. Mm. Mind you, there's no guarantee he'll get nice on that yellow bottom right again though. Yeah, a bit, a bit difficult on position there. Yeah, already a testy shot. Mm. We normally find the first few frames on these streams a bit tentative for the players until they find the groove on this table. Yeah, he struck that nicely. That was a good shot. Didn't really have to do anything with the white, just kind of hold it in the middle of the table. Just got to keep it together now. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but... As you said, it's always a bit edgy on the first couple of games. I feel there might have been um, some misunderstanding as well. In the, uh, in the first match, um, Aaron and I were discussing just um, the pool tables just the way pool tables run it's like golf courses really you know like oh, yeah. they're all a bit different they all have their quirks and that and um, I know some people out there took that a bit strangely uh, I just right. want to uh, ensure those that are listening Ooh, that, that uh, there's no there's no criticism of the operation going on here or anything it's just um, it's just a matter of discussing how pool tables work really and, and people playing for money on them and they haven't played on them before so yeah uh, it's a bit of a defensive comment from me here, but ultimately, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that. Uh, oh, nice pot, that. Yeah. Yeah, that we're here to, you know, promote the venue and do what's best by everyone involved, really. Ooh, mm. This is going to be a foul as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. Mm. What's Josh Barnes quite rash on that one, really. Yeah. If he just took an extra couple of seconds or two, I, yeah, I reckon you would have put that down. Uh, one thing I've noticed already about him is he's, uh, he's obviously quite a talented potter, but he's like really casual about the way he walks into the shot. He comes into a lot of shots from the side. Mm. At some point, when you're on a tough shot, they're going to find you out. You think it's, it's like a gangster there? who holds his Glock on the side. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it is exactly that. Not Sideways. <laughs> Well, mistakes will be punished by Flaxman, and he takes the first frame, 1-0. Well, yeah, it's interesting, actually, because like, um, 
you can kind of win or lose a game like this in your first couple of racks. Um, and I suspect what Josh is probably trying to do, oh, I actually can hear myself now, <laughs> not talking at the microphone. You've got to be nice and close yeah, to the mic. Know. Yeah. Oh, well, he's right in front of me, I'll say something in a sec. I don't think those headphones are great either. Seem okay. This is Josh Barnes breaking frame two. It's a solid break there. Yeah, good break. Yeah, I was just going to say, oh, he's back again. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was trying to blow Simon away in the first game and make it look really easy. Mm. Well, you want to exude confidence and uh, you do, power. You, you can make your opponent fall apart, really, if you look really good. If you look like you're indestructible, they, you can put so much pressure on them immediately because they think, oh, my God, I'm out of my depth. Mm. So I, I could see that he was maybe trying to play like that. But that's, that's the third really careless miss he's made there from somebody you, you can tell is already a very good potter. So... He might find he loses a lot of frames that he doesn't mean to if he doesn't start cutting that out. <laughs> Table's gone a bit horrible now. So it's still open. Yeah, there's a lot of bunching on this bottom left-hand side. It's quite nasty. It's going to be quite a scrappy frame. Looking at it here, there is a chance. Mm. There is a chance to get reds open. It needs a little bit of luck. I don't know if he's got an angle to break this bottom red out, which it does. Where's Cubel? Oh. Well, he's got lots of passion. This Josh Barnes, that's for sure. That's definitely a quality we like to see. I think he's going to need to tighten up because he, at this rate, he's going to get a hide in. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to cut. <laughs> yeah, I could just see it already. You could see there's been a few, few so such, well, not careless as such, but like casual shots, and um, he's not playing the, he's not playing the right guy to be playing like that. Oh, well, mind you, that's not the best either. He's left himself nothing. But he's got all his yellows out of the way. Yeah. They all go in somewhere now. Not but sure yeah. if he can pop the red this kind of just below the, the black spot. If he can cut that in one of the middles. It's not a very nice shot, though. He might have to play safe here. Yeah. I suppose that <laughs> that's the other thing that could happen. Of course, if one guy's flying around the table, it kind of messes with... Like, if the other guy's playing really fast, it kind of messes with your rhythm... And then you start playing a different pace than you expected to. Yeah, because you're, you're expecting a certain amount of time to sit there and analyse well, the make, table, and then suddenly yeah. you're back at the table. And yeah, well, not only that, but you feel like you're being really slow. But yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's, up. it's an interesting tactic, for sure. You hear people saying that about playing Ronnie O'Sullivan all the time. Like, he, um, you kind of, you end up trying to play in it at his pace, and then the players... And then he's got you. Yeah. Yeah. The rocket, yeah. The namesake of this pool hall, I believe. Rocket Ronnie's. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's not know come from anywhere <laughs> else, is it? <laughs> I don't know how he's got away with that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably quite a few up and down the country, though, I imagine, probably, along yeah. those lines. Yeah, well, obviously this is owned by Ronnie Keats, but yeah, I can't believe there's not a, a trademark involved in that. Mm. That was a little bit careless. Hopefully uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan isn't watching this and uh, considering some sort of uh, litigation. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I well, should sue them. <laughs> well, if he is, let's just remind Ronnie he's probably got bigger fish to fry at the moment. Yeah, yeah, focus on bigger things. <laughs> There's more money elsewhere, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of an interesting situation in this game now, so... I can't really suggest anything because Simon's right in front of me and last time I did that they can hear me but yeah, it's like he kind of partially wants to cover that red but he also doesn't really want to put another ball over that corner this is going to reach a rail well that's not too bad actually I know he's he's kind of that yellow that he's put there he's put it kind of in the way of the red 
but he's not tied the yellow up. You can still land on that. So, I mean, he's not completely covered the red, so it's not not super ideal either. I mean, there is a pattern he could pop. He but you still got to be able to get the cue ball out of that area when you pot that red yeah, exactly. to get on the black. What he could do is play the red top left, leave the white roughly where the red is, back double the other red, and then try and leave the white on the left side cushion and thread the white through those yellows. But yeah, a safety might have been a more sensible shot there. Well, he's queued up that, tied up on the cushion red, and it's now nicely over the pocket at least. And uh, he knows he still owns a pocket that Flaxman has four yeah. yellows yeah, over, basically. I think basically. he'll pop one of those yellows out now. Oh, he's trying to get two shots. I'm never a huge fan of just trying to play a pure snooker. I think I'd have kicked that yellow out, out into the middle of the table. You've got to, the snooker's got to be the secondary, hasn't it? Developing the, the object ball first is yeah. the primary, and then you get the snooker that, as yeah, well. That's the way I operate, but as it happens, he managed to get the two shots, so it's worked out okay. Hmm. But yeah. if he'd have if he'd have got out of the, got out of that, then you know Simon's still got four balls over the top of that red. Mm. Oh, should be looking at taking his out now. That's come out okay. I think he's got the one in the middle. Can play a plant as well, but it's, yeah, it should be all right here. I'll say that it looks like it's quite thin on this, so maybe the cue ball's going quite close to the yellow on the corner pocket. He's digging down a bit. Oh, that's a nice shot. He played that nicely. Controlled that kiss on those two yellows nicely. It's important frame to Simon Flaxman because he, at some point, Josh is going to kind of get into this game, and you can tell he's, you can tell he's a, he's probably quite a handy player. Hmm. But he's just trying. I don't know if he's. Try, it feels weird to say he's trying too hard because that's not exactly <laughs> what's happening at all, is it? It's almost like some psychological game. It's almost going like on. he's trying to be too casual. Yeah. And at some point, he's going to have to get into the match. Yeah, he doesn't want to find himself three or four frames behind without without any frames on the board himself, which could be a possibility here. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's why it's important for Simon because he's had a few soft games given to him, so he needs to take them out not make any easy mistakes put the pressure on Josh immediately just want to make sure he gets past the middle of the table here so how did the uh, Q score Academy go this morning <laughs> I think it's fair to say that I need to start doing some advertising because we have okay. one child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The most dedicated of them all. Yeah. Well, um, He's your future star. That's the one you need to uh, well, invest well the most be, in. He's doing really well. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's actually, I've just started writing all this. Um, so like what I, was, I said with the snooker stuff, you get like these gradings. I've been trying to come up with something equivalent for the English pool that mm. kind of like complements the snooker rather than like competes with it. Yeah. And... Uh, I only just finished doing all, all the level two stuff up um, this week, drawing it up and doing fancy diagrams and everything. And um, he's, he's only got one more thing to do to complete level two already. So oh, blimey. To, <laughs> to jump straight <laughs> on the level three. Well, at least he's driving you forward, I guess, in yeah, uh, producing the materials. Yeah, that'd be nice to have a night off, though. <laughs> well, Flaxman's on the black. And he puts it down to make it 2 0. Yeah, good finish. Just lost, lost the white a little bit on that yellow, but yeah, good job. <laughs> so there we go, Simon Flaxman, 2 0 up against Josh Barnes. And with the break now, coming up on frame three with Simon Flaxman to break. Bit of a wonky rack, that. <laughs> yeah, you do see it on this uh, camera angle. You see the, uh, the triangle moving about from frame to frame. I guess without some laser-guided machine to do it for you, that's always going to be the case. Uh, you can't get a line drawn on the centre of the table. Mm. Um. I think having a... If you had like um, a laser that just shone down on top of the table, 
What the hell? And they have that? a permanent triangle. <laughs> well, he's got a cut now into this uh, top left, top right hand pocket. But he has uh, lots of gusto, Josh. Yeah. I think I'm starting to see what Josh is. <laughs> Put it that way. And I think he plays a lot of snooker and probably doesn't play a lot of pool. Or if he does play a lot of pool, he doesn't play it against a lot of very good players. Hmm. Because you wouldn't be playing like this if you, were, you did play top players. No, that's it. I mean, it's like you said before, it's like how when your opponent, how many returns to the table are they going to give you? And that, that generally dictates the quality of the player you're playing. Uh, is it a one, two or three return? Was that a foul, that shot? I couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, Josh is, Josh is saying he thinks it might be one. Well, I guess we'll get to, I we'll get sure. to see there. Oh. oh, I missed it again. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he he didn't hit like a cushion was, afterwards. Could he hit a yellow? I think he, I've, he was totaled, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, we aren't referees here, of course. No. But it did look like he was totaled, and therefore he didn't have to hit a cushion. Yeah, we do have to call it. Ah, okay. Um, and as there's no referee, your opponent is effectively acting as a ref, so he should have... I mean, I'd, prob you're I'd probably let this slide, because to be fair, Simon wasn't paying attention, he was playing with his phone. <laughs> 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 so, but, yeah, you should. You have to call it to your opponent. Okay. It's a total yeah. snooker, it's not automatic. You have to announce it, and then your opponent will come and um, potentially come and look, examine the table and make sure they've agreed that it is total snooker. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. Hmm. So it landed a bit awkward here because he's very straight on this red. Don't see where his next red comes from. He hasn't really got a nice safety either because his balls are all cushions. And given the acute angle, he can't put much power into it. Yeah, it looks like he's planning on maybe leaving a double. What he could do is he could stick the white on the yellow and just kick the red out into the middle of the table. Hmm. Hopefully he didn't hear me say that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm having a commentator's booth built here. Um, I think that's always going to be the... That's a good shot, that. That's an excellent shot. Always going to be the risk as for commentators on these live streams that the players might overhear us, but it's quite a cosy environment here, isn't it, on this match table. And um, Rocket Ronnie has put a lot of investment recently into furniture and a nice shot. to uh, develop the match table area before before the recent spate of development. Player, uh, just people could just run up onto the table and create chaos for the players here and um, yeah the owners have recognised that and put a bit of effort and uh, investment into trying to build this area up a bit more so that wasn't it's played a couple of nice shots there we just lost the cue ball a little bit he's going to fluke it in the side no yeah I, I, th I thought he was going to take that out because you can tell he's a really good pot and he can move the white ball around but I think he's yeah, it's not quite used to the way the. It's like yeah, I get the impression he's not used to playing English pool. He just seems to get caught out by the weight of the cue ball and that screw back shot earlier. It's just all a little bit uncontrolled. Hmm. But fair play well, he's going to have a lot of um, constructive criticism provided by us commentators for him to look back on later if he wants that's, oh, that's absolutely. part of the aim of the game for us certainly is to be a uh, learning resource for everyone who participates well, exactly so I mean you, you can tell he's definitely pretty talented mm. so there's no reason he's got why some he raw talent there yeah, yeah could, no reason why he couldn't be a really good player just you could just tell he's uh, taming the beast isn't it inside <laughs> a little bit well, I think he just kind of I don't know kind of wants to go for everything wants to let his arm go but you have to be a bit more controlled and conservative than that you've got to have some strategy to get around the table and recognise when you don't have the opportunity to just let loose and you've got to develop that opportunity yeah and even just the way you go about a clearance you have to be you have to be fairly precise about certain things there's not a lot of room for margin for error on an English pool table it gets quite no, crowded they are very small yeah very cosy environments to play this is a tough shot he's got a small window to land the cue ball in yeah. 
Oh, he decided to play for the one under the black, which is probably a better choice of shot. Didn't think he had enough angle to do that. So a, as long as he doesn't lose the white in behind this yellow, this is another good chance. Oh, oh which is exactly done. That. Oh, now he's on it. Is he on it? He could probably come off the cushion and nudge that he, in. I think he can spin it in, even if he can't hit it. And Flaxman's on the black for going 3 0 up here. They both had quite a few chances per game, though. Yep, good finish. I can see, I can see Josh getting a bit frustrated because I can. He's already kind of wank, whacking the uh, balls around on the table. I can feel like he feels like he should he should be winning these games or something. Mm. Now certainly against someone of Simon Flaxman's uh, capabilities, it's, it's never going to be a walk in the park. No, and he hasn't. Simon hasn't really had to do that much. He's kind of been given a few opportunities. This is a um, the first time for Josh under the cameras anywhere as well. Well, so that's true. That always makes a difference. So he's probably got uh, performance anxiety pressure sort of thing as well. Mm. I did, I did uh, say to him just before the match just to, to put them out of your mind. It doesn't matter. You know, like we're not expecting pace or anything from him as a player. He's got to play his own game. It is hard to play on the stream. You, mm. You're thinking about stuff that you like. I don't know. There's like you have to kind of get over the self-consciousness. It took me like six games or something like that in my match against Simon Flaxman to kind of forget about the cameras and just try and focus in on the match. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you got some you got a couple of guys in the corner talking about what you're doing every shot you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bit unnerving, I'm sure. Yeah, that's true. Thinking about, I wonder what they thought about that shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're chuckling away. What are they laughing about? Oh, good. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's well, it's like uh, adding another level to the challenge, isn't it? It's, uh, rather than just playing a money match behind closed doors or with nobody looking, it's uh, you're ex you're completely exposed to the world. That was you know, a nice shot. He found a good little gap there. Left himself on four yellows. This isn't completely straightforward I think there is a pattern here I think I'd go bottom right left middle sorry bottom right right middle left middle um, and then the one that's just off the side cushion on the left middle and then come down for the yellow bottom right and try and come up through the gap but it's a bit a bit ugly really no, he's looking at trying to get rid of that one early which might be a good idea it's very difficult to get from that last ball onto the black Ah, OK, so he looks like he's going to try and play the one in the centre of the table, then play bottom right, and then play that one along the bottom cushion into the left corner, and then leave the one in the side... Oh, excuse me. Leave the one in the side pocket to get on the black. That's pro probably a good pattern, that one, actually. Does, does mean he's got to play a bit more of a testy shot. Yeah, he's got, he's got an awkward bridge here. And he's, he's only really got a very small window to get nicely on this yellow. He's got to be fairly straight on it, but he doesn't want to be dead straight either. Yeah, about where he's putting his finger there. If he ends up too much angle, then that red that's above the yellow comes into play and it's quite difficult to get on the one in the side cushion. Hmm. Good afternoon, Paul Bamford. Thank you for joining us Ooh, on the stream. Let's just overrun it. Yeah, and see, now that red is a massive problem. I think the best he could do now is maybe pot the yellow and just leave the white on top of that red. This is what he's looking at now. So now he's going to have to try and drop this yellow in the side pocket. Hmm, does the black go in the top right? I don't know if it does, actually. No. No, it doesn't. I'm looking right at the angle now. No, so now he's, now he's got to try and drop this in so softly that he's still got a thin cut on the black in the middle. It's a tricky shot, this. As always, it looks straighter in real life than it does on the stream. <laughs> they look much thinner on the stream. 
Went and looked at the tables well, he, and he, played it. He did a good bit of cue ball action there as well, just to take the pace out of the cue ball as soon as it hit the uh, the red there. Yeah, he played a nice little drag on the cue ball there. Well, Simon's raced into a 4-0 lead here. That was the first game that Simon really did all the hard work himself. The other few games, Josh has kind of handed it to him. Mm -hmm. So he can't really afford. I mean, it's, what is it, 17? So Simon's a quarter of the way through. So um, Josh needs to start um, tightening these games up. Not necessarily play like a safety game, but it just needs to be more controlled on his positional play if he's going to go for the clearances. Yeah. This is frame five. Simon Flaxman to break. Interesting break he's going with. He's going for a second ball cut break, soft cut break, but they've been splitting quite nicely, but this is the only time he's made a ball and then they split horrible this time. <laughs> I don't know if he can pot. It looks like he's quite straight on this yellow. So he might be able to pot that and leave himself on one of the ones to the bottom right corner. So they've actually, even though it looks horrible, there might actually be a clearance on here. So I think he can pot the one, the one that's on the, f uh, you've got the yellow that's between the two reds, so that might go in the left middle. In which yeah. case he could drop the one that's next to it into the right middle and then play that through the two reds. And that red is, uh, the red by the left middle is positioned okay enough for a... Uh and a big pocket, so to speak, if you need it as well, I think. Yeah, exactly. So he might have a chance here. So the one thing I do like about um, doing the streams on this table and the way it plays is it really doesn't doesn't give you much. You've got to fight on this table. You've got to get to know it quickly if you want to win the match. Mm. It's quite speedy, isn't it? This is the key shot then. I think he's going to try and kiss that yellow. Oh, he's going to try and bump him out. Well, you can cut this one into the bottom right. It's a horrible bridge though. I don't know. That he can, no, he can't get it in the bottom right. I'm looking at the no. table. You can't see enough of it. I mean, he can cut it in the bottom left as we're looking at it, but that's a horrendous shot. I wouldn't want to play that. I think he's looking at... Is he touching this yellow? Just Could he maybe get it in the middle? It's going to be very close to the push shot. That's so close to it. Yeah, I mean, the red might help it into the middle. You almost might have to play this one at the bottom of the table to the corner, but I was looking at doubling it in, doubling it in the middle. Might cover the side pocket, I suppose, but whatever he plays, this is not very nice. I think I'd just be trying to cut this in. I just hope Josh finds, uh, realises he needs to uh, just bring a bit of uh, tactical play to this game. I think Simon's got a good chance of covering that bottom left corner if he gets it, because he's going to have to hit it quite firm, but the yellow's not going to travel very fast. So if he doesn't pot it, he's got a good chance of covering the pocket that's got those two reds on it. I think he wants to try and take it out on this visit, which is, this is such a tough shot to try and get this double. And he's having a bridge really high. Must be really tight to that yellow. It's a great effort. Well, they're all open now. They're all they they all go into a pocket. So, so Josh, is, this is probably his first decent chance at an open table. I don't know what he's playing here. Plant. Okay, I don't know why. I don't, well, I mean that was an okay shot, but I don't know why he did it. <laughs> He would have gone for one of the two reds down the bottom there. Yeah, just kind of clear up the problem area of the table. Yeah, it doesn't really have any need to play that. It was um, just introduced an element of risk that didn't need to be there. Still, I mean, it wasn't a big deal though, so he should still be looking at trying to clear these up. I think I'll be going top left and trying to leave the white just below the... No, he's going, oh, this is the wrong shot as well. He has to go twice across the face of these reds. And oh, he's not... Left right. himself a shot. He's well. getting these patterns wrong. Yeah. That was very tricky to try and leave himself on one of those reds. We're going to try and get a snooker now. And he's just leaked out. I think he's left of the yellow by the black. I mean, it's a very tough shot, but Simon Flaxman's a very good potter, so he could knock this in. Even then, and then look oh, Simon, the will be, Simon will be looking at 
looking at the play here from Josh and know that he'll probably get another visit even if he um, just plays a developmental shot here rather than trying to attack you get this a lot when you play um, in inverted commas snooker players is that they take this game for granted and this game isn't about potting balls anyone can pot a ball on an English pool table this game is about positioning isn't it and cue ball control and mm. pattern recognition and safety play what's that going off the yellow Ooh. And the, and there's so such a high chance of a fluke as well that uh, yeah. you know, like especially in black ball where you can you can fluke your ball, and even if you knock your opponent's ball in, as long as your ball goes in, it's okay with a skill shot. Yeah. So it's got it's a bit of a tricky shot. I think if I was playing this one on the right side cushion, you've got to kind of play it with right hand side and kind of spin the white down the table with side spin. Can't really get there with top spin. No, that was tricky from there. Well, he got on the yellow, but they would have taken him away from the black as well. It would have been tough to get back up the table there. And He'd be disappointed for missing that, though. That was a really good chance to take this frame. These balls are a bit more open now. And he really needs to focus. He should be getting these. He's good enough to get these. this one down the rail bring the white back a couple of inches Ooh, twitched it see him like kind of jumping up off his shot as he played that one he's under it now he's under it because he's given away a few easy games mm -hmm. very quickly as well Ooh, that was a very risky shot he played there I think he can just about cut this in but it's a horrible shot and the white's going to be flying up and down the table He's got it. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. Played He's that with a touch black. of um, inside spin to try and clear going inside the black. Was... And he's made it 5 0. I think Josh is in danger of being overmatched here. It's a weird one. Like you said, uh, you get this, like I said, with snooker players where they, like I said, they kind of take the game for granted. And. Um, like he should have been able, and then it's like put himself under pressure for it all entirely his own fault, you know? Not for, not because mm. Simon Flaxman's blown him away. I mean, Simon's played okay, but Simon's got a lot more in the tank than this. He's just done what he's had to do, and he's just been a bit more controlled, whereas Josh has kind of given these away, really. That was quite a high rack there. Has he got? Is it going to drop? No. Oh, it's dry. That's a sickener, that one. I don't know how that's still on the table. Yeah, I can see what you mean. I imagine Josh could probably quite comfortably beat the average person in the pub over a few visits on a pool table. But if you're going to come down to Rocket Ronnie's and play stalwarts like Mr. Flaxman, who's down here often and, and loves pool, then... You can quite easily come unstuck against these players who know this game intimately. Yeah. Yeah, he's come into this game knowing... Oh, that's careless. He'll be disappointed with that. He's gifted this one away. Yeah, he'd have come into this game knowing that he's a really good potter and probably assuming that that's enough to win the match. And against we'll a lot have a good of people, chance of it that probably least. would be. But against Simon Flaxman, that's not enough. You have to start actually playing the game properly. That's a nice little kiss he had on that yellow. That's worked out beautifully. Feel free to leave a comment in the chat if you uh, have any insight on these players or what you're seeing today. Nicely played. Or if you'd just like to tell us that you love us because we're desperate for your <laughs> love. That'd be nice. Hashtag <laughs> love for Rocket Rackers TV. <laughs> right, so he needs to think about how he's going to get on the black here because it's kind of masked off of the yellow. Again, it's not a big deal, but it's just something that needs to be put into consideration. Well, he's got a good position there. He's 
That's, that's three millimetres away from him being on nothing there. <laughs> so. It'd be good for Josh to get his first frame in this match. This is, this is not easy to get on the... No. It's not. I mean, he's got quite a big area, but he's going to have to try and go around, the ins, uh, around these yellows. Oh, and yeah, let's see. Now he can... I, I think he's fully snookered there. This is it. See, he thinks he's unlucky there, but he's not because he's taken them in the wrong order. And he's he's left himself, you know, he's only really got a very small window to get between um, between the side cushion, those yellows, and then not to hit the yellow by the black. So, I mean, it could have gone right. I mean, it was very easy to get right, but it was also very easy to go wrong. And it's another another soft turnover of the table to Simon. Yeah, and they're all they're all there for Simon. All these yellows. I wouldn't say a single one of them was problematic. Even the one on the bottom cushion is close enough. And those yeah. two are plantable, I think. Yeah, I don't don't think he needs to play that. I think if he plays the one bottom left, it leaves him on the one nearest the corner. He can get out and be on the other one. Yeah. So should be able to screw around the back of the second yellow, the two that are in the line. Easy enough. Again, this is just just watch the way that Simon Flaxman clears these up. And even though he's getting, you can see he, even he's being a bit lackadaisical. But just the way that he's playing the shots is he's more likely to have a good result. Yeah, just the order of play, isn't it? Just making sure you take the right right ball in the right. Yeah, and time. He's, he's playing shots where he's killing the cue ball, so he's less likely for the cue ball to slip down the table and snooker in behind balls. He's playing, you know, even him playing loose and easy is far more controlled. That's how you need to play this game. This game's all about keeping hold of the cue ball and not losing it. You don't want to be playing shots where, like um, Josh had earlier where you're trying to come around four cushions to give yourself a, a land in a half foot wide window to have a nice shot on the black it's just you can't play like that it's not sustainable you can do that on snooker because you've got a bigger table and you've got much bigger margin for error to land although you do really want to be within a certain window otherwise you end up having tough shots but mm. if you're a good potter you can afford yourself a bigger window than somebody who isn't a good potter but this game you've got really you've got small margins for the cue ball yeah well, I hope, if anything, like it's, it's looking quite likely that Simon's going to win this comprehensively, and that's uh, that's putting it gently, I think. I'd like, um, to see, I'd like to see Josh get the ten. I think he needs. A, I think he just needs a bit of a. Um, I don't know. He needs a. He needs a kind of. I can see him being like quite frustrated at the moment. He needs a bit of a mental reset. Yeah. Kind of snap himself out of it a bit. Get you know really get stuck into the match and stop trying to overly play it too casual you know what I mean there's frame 7 the Simon Flaxman to break and he went in on the side of the pack there and got a couple of reds down yeah it's interesting the way he's breaking he's playing a very soft break trying to make a trying to make a corner ball shouldn't really go in unless you've got an angled rack which I'm not actually I'm not going to go down that road <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this might actually work in his favour because he's the way he's breaking is leaving um, clusters mm. and I feel like Simon Flaxman seems more capable of dealing with them yeah. in a controlled manner I feel like if Josh is going to open a cluster up he's going to hit it at 100 miles an hour and hope for the best and I think if Simon goes into a ball he's trying you know he's going to try and play it the right way and go into the right ball at the right pace and try and get a predictable result I mean, what he could do here, for example, is he could pot this yellow bottom right and just kick that yellow that's next to the red out a bit and leave himself on the other one. He hasn't chosen to, but you can play this. You can like play tiny little kisses on balls that just manoeuvre them into nicer positions without having to move them more than an inch or two. And it slows down the cue ball a little bit as well. Just takes a bit of power, pace out the cue ball now so. and again. Just going to say, I wasn't sure what yellow he's playing for, and. <laughs> Apparently it was that one. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly, yeah. That's worked out beautifully, actually. He's got a nice angle. He can just screw between the two reds and leave himself on the one bottom left. 
should be taking these but I worry about saying that though because I do have the curse of doom <laughs> Yeah, you've got to hold your tongue until it's played. Yeah, go, yeah I knew they were going to do that. You could that. also kill the white <laughs> on the red and leave that yellow in the middle, is what it looks like. Well, no, he hasn't. Mm. I think he did try that, actually, judging yeah. by the way his cue came off his hand. <laughs> Not really a big deal. I think he can pot this, Just be on the one in the middle, no problem. Or maybe, he's, hmm, maybe he needs to play it with a bit of side to, just to straighten the shot up. But again, he should be on the yellow in the right middle. I don't see this being a problem. These pockets play quite big, I think, on this table. You can cheat the pocket a bit. Yeah, so he potted up for side rail. Not a really problem. Just needs to make sure he doesn't snooker himself, which I think he's got enough angle that he can just clear the black. Yeah, he just needs to find it, get that cue ball towards the uh, bulk cushion, really. Yeah, that would be ideal. Yep, just cleared the black, so number of ways he could play this he could he could just come cut the yellow thin come above that top red just leave himself yeah which is what he's looking at there so if he could just kiss that red that's near his hand that would be about perfect Ooh, don't bounce oh, oh, just sorry. about there was that the limit of the range but it was in range and he's made it 7-0 yeah very nice clearance again very controlled very measured He's not even, but I wouldn't even say he's hit a gear yet. It's just, mm. it's all coming a bit too easy for Simon at the moment. Absolutely. So just to advertise our next stream, hopefully that'll show up. Yep. The next scheduled stream, at least, is Ben Lindsay versus Matthew Harrison. A race to 17 for £500. Oh, Ben Lindsay does love a money match on the stream. That match is sponsored by TKS Envirocare and Terry Vos Painting and Decorating. This will be his, what, 36th match, is it? Something <laughs> like that, yeah. Centenary's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't argue because he's a, he's a good customer. So thank you, Ben, for that. Keep them coming. It's quite entertaining to watch, actually. He's a good player to be on the stream, I think. He is, he yeah. He for his shots and he's, uh, he's very aggressive. He's quite creative as well, from what I've seen. Well, he takes it seriously, so it's, it's good to see that. You are, of course, watching Money Match Day, Blackpool Pool Money Matches. I do need to run around the hall and get some scores in a moment. We've got Ben Lindsay versus Darren Daniels, Daniel, Danny Butler versus Ryan Watts. Of course, you're watching Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes. We've got Ben Mills versus Matthew Richardson, Jamie Close versus Gary Sefton. Luke Cross versus Daniel Baird and Stephen Wonder versus Mark Montague. I'm going to leave the buttons with Simon Ayers and try and go get some of those scores on the early doors. But for now, this is frame eight. Josh Barnes to break. So Lee's just going to go and look at the scores around. I'd like to see Josh. Oh, that's not a good start. I was going to say I would like to have seen a breaking clear up, but I didn't even get the finish saying it. Uh, I think he needs he needs a couple of decent chances at the table that are straightforward, just to kind of settle his nerves and hopefully we'll see the best of him. Because you can tell he'd be a really good player. He must be good. Pots really well. He's got a solid cue action. Just struggling a bit with the um, with the game, the table, and the patterns. So maybe if he get get something a bit easy, kind of ease his way back into the game. And hopefully, he can make a bit more of a fight of it. Simon's trying to get the awkward yellow out early, which is always a good choice. I suspect he'll be going for yellow. Someone just mm, it's got a bit funny that. I think he can just about plant that, but it's yeah, he's just looking at that now. Otherwise, he's got to try and go into him again, which you don't really want to be doing. Could do that from this yellow, but... I'm not sure he wanted to be on the, on the cushion there. <laughs> OK, 
cube was going to be flying around the table if he plays this plant. No, he needed to hit it harder than that, so the yellow came back out. Looks like he's going to have to go into him again. And that, that red that's kind of uh, where the black spot is on a snooker table, that's a bit of a problem for trying to develop these balls. Losing a bit of concentration at the moment. I mean, that was a bit of a careless shot. It's not nothing really. Try and carry this yellow off the other one. Oh, it went. Oh, what a great shot. What a great shot. I didn't think he could get that. Oh. He's got one more tricky shot to ne negotiate, and he's actually made a great chance here. Make Simon Flaxman bloody oh, what have I done? Oh, I've messed this up. I made so <laughs> I try. I was given one job, which was get the right colours right, and I've got it back to front. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm not touching anything ever again. <laughs> oh, that's a delightful shot. I think he's a bit unlucky to land up completely straight on this. I think he's gonna have to. Yeah, he's looking at playing the long yellow, trying to thread the cue ball between the two reds. We can just bump off the cushion a touch. That might makes all the difference on this shot. Oh, it's just rolled back down. So this is all about queuing nicely. Hit positively through the ball. Gets the pot. Should be on the black. Beautiful shot. That's a good finish there from Simon Flaxman. Very good. Excellent. And Josh is getting a little bit frustrated. It was a bit. It was unfortunate to pop the white there, but yeah, he's not. He needs. He needs some easy chances to get into the game, and he's not getting them now. Flaxman the break. I'm not going to touch anything because I'll, I'll mess it up. <laughs> I'll mess it up again. <laughs> so let's see if this corner ball goes. This, sh this shouldn't go. That no, was nowhere near. Right, good. <laughs> I have seen some people where they, they play the side break like that and they twist the rack deliberately to try and make the corner ball go in, but it shouldn't go in if the rack's in the right position. Well, this is actually a pretty good chance. So he needs to take us. Ooh, I think that's okay. Oh no. Ooh, yeah, I think the I think the red on the side cushion goes. So this is actually a great chance. He just needs to concentrate and make sure he gets it. This is the key shot here. This red. Okay, I think he's straight enough it could screw back off the side cushion and be nicely on the red. I think he could just drop this in and hold for the black. Yeah, nice. Nicely done. Well done. See that? Um, if you didn't see that, Simon Flax. Uh, well, Josh broke off. Pot the cue ball. 
Oh, yeah, he's just doing it now. So, so. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know, he's just doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's eight, isn't it? What's the score now? Uh, Is it 7 1? Was it 8 1? Yes, yeah, 8 1. 8 1. Yeah, so Simon Flaxon won a game and then Josh has just um, won on. Alright, I'll just fudge that in. There yeah, you go. I did one thing with your phone and I messed it up. So oh I dear. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't even set the difference between yellows and reds. Okay. Oh dear. Well, there you go, we fudged that frame, but we're at 8 1. There you go. Yeah, I just got some scores in from around the hall. I'll. Uh, Read them out in a minute. Luke Cross, Daniel Baird, they're only 1 1 into their match. What was that? Such a disappointment after a nice game there. It was such a careless shot. Threw his whole body into that shot. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know if you saw. So Josh broke off and potted the cue ball, and Simon pulled out a really good clearance to win that game. And then Simon broke dry but had a really nice split, and Josh mopped him up. Okay, let me let me fix that then quickly. I'll try and uh, make sure that it represents reality. So that's not what I want. So Simon went eight nil up, did he? Yes. So we'll make I don't know if you're counting, what was it, reverse dishes or something, but they were both reverse dishes. Oh, were they? Okay. That was a nice pot there, by the way, by Josh. Reverse Red dish, hot, really. and the winner was player two. And reverse dish, and the winner was player one. So if I update that now. Yeah, so he's played a safety there, but I don't, don't think he's going to get any great advantage out of it. It's I don't think Simon's going to miss this, but he might do. Yeah, that's the so trouble with play. So he just played a really naive safety there. He just played a snooker, which is, he did well, but in this game, it's, you're almost just playing a snooker against a good player isn't really enough. Just buying yourself a shot, but as it happens, he, <laughs> he played a nice shot there to get a couple of his reds out, so he has got a chance to win the game. So going to need good cue ball control and at the moment Josh hasn't really been showing a lot of that it'd be nice to see him if he can do it though so he can pop this one top right and play the red that's just beneath the black and use that to get on the awkward one lost the cue ball a bit yeah it's not quite got the right angle there is he yeah, he can screw back off the top cushion with a bit of um, inside oh, he's playing that ball now I'll take it down to the bottom left it's a good it's a, shot. It's a good pot. He's still got a chance here. It's got to play another couple of awkward shots though. Yeah. I don't don't know if that yellow at the uh, sorry, the red that's lower most on the table, if it goes past the yellow in the bottom left, he might have to try and kick it out. Uh, isn't that what I said earlier? I said if it looks I'm, I'm sure if Josh has to develop any balls he'll be doing at two hundred miles an hour. Mm. What he should yeah, have been doing to was the gods, yeah. just stroking that in and just bumping that ball past the yellow leaving himself a shot on it. I think he's not just just not quite used to these tables enough. He's not really got the finesse game down. I think it's like you said before as well, respecting the game of pool as um, you know, the discipline in and of itself. That especially like black ball as well, it, you know, it's um bit of a chance here though, if you can pop this natural angle to bump the other red out. Ooh. I think if he'd have got the pot, he might have had a different kiss on that red and that might have actually developed it. Because half of snooker is touching a red and getting the cue ball back up to the balk line, isn't it? Behind the balk colours. That's half of your game of snooker well, on that big table is, you know, break building, but also that safety onto the balk cushion. Well, yeah, the majority of safety shots in snooker, you're looking at leaving distance to your opponent. Mm. Uh, but it's not possible on a pool table. Well, if you're playing a good player, there's almost nothing they can't pop. Yeah. Especially somebody like Simon Flaxman, I wouldn't want to leave him a shot at anything. Because, all right, he might not be odds on to get it, but you never when, know when he is going to knock it in. 
And it's like if you're trying to be a sniper and suddenly you find yourself in close quarters combat, you're going to be uh, in a bit of world of trouble. I think, I think this yellow goes past the one over the corner, in which case this should be pretty straightforward. Oh, maybe it didn't. Well, he's in a strong position, Simon, but he has turned the table over again, which um, I'm sure he didn't really want to be doing because you never really know what's going to happen. A good cr Josh could crash bang wallop a double off this red on a side cushion or a treble or something like that in. Well, you, you, know you can get a cut double here on this red, certainly. I don't know what else you call it, but I call it a cut double. I'm you cut it into the cushion. It's hard to tell if he's going to get a double kiss if he tries playing that. But mm. he can definitely play a triple. Is he looking at playing cushion first and then playing the red up the top, up the corner? I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he could just deflect off that red and send the cue ball up. Well, that wasn't far away from going in. Mm. I don't really feel like he knew what he was doing there. <laughs> well, it's the follow up shot, isn't it? It's, it's what next? Well, he had, it, far well, he had away. a shot on a, on a long, tricky red to half a pocket, but. And then what's after that? It's all about the. Uh, He's not making the game easy for himself, and that's half the. That's, that's what good players do. They're never playing a hard shot. He's um, Josh is kind of battling against the table. He's having to play difficult shots all the time. He's having to let his arm go. And it's just because he's not being controlled enough and not playing quite the right patterns. It's just making the game so much more difficult for him. Ooh, that needs to run. Yeah, he's just about all right on this. He can kill the white for the black in the right middle. Ooh, is he going to be on it? He's on it. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad on this. Oh, excellent shot there by Simon. Yeah, nice pop. That's the sort oh. of shot that you've, even though it's quite a long distance, because you're quite close to the black and it's just off straight, you kind of fancy getting it if you're a half-decent potter. So I didn't think they should have. Unless he was under a lot of pressure, he shouldn't have had a lot of trouble with that shot. Mm. Didn't end up too bad on it. You're going for like quite, coming quite into a, an open pocket from that angle. Just a quick rundown on the... Uh Oh, I haven't updated it. Sorry about that. Might have to do it next time round. Yeah. No time between frames here. You can see the live scores in the bottom right, left-hand corner anyway. Danny Butler and Ryan Watts were yet to start when I went and got the scores. Ben Lindsay had clawed his way back to 7-6 ahead against Darren Daniels. to going four behind. Luke Cross and Daniel Bear were just one apiece. When I peaked, Ben Mills and Matt Matthew Richardson were four apiece. And Jamie Close has beaten Gary Sefton 7-1. Nice pot there. That was a key shot. He's got a great chance to win this game now. And Stephen Mundo is behind Mark Montague, six frames to three. He should be getting these because these all look pretty straightforward. Oh, unless he plays that shot. <laughs> Well, that's worked out all right. My God, that could have gone wrong. He could have tied the black up. He could have done anything there. I messed that up again. Why is he, Why are you doing that? Why have you done that? I don't understand that. That's a good pot. Where's the cue ball going? No man's land. See, he's, gonna, he's thinking he's unlucky there, but I just there's just no control about that shot whatsoever. Just trying to pot the ball. I don't know what he thought was going to happen there. This is such a tough shot he's left himself now. Oh, that was unlucky. I think if he'd have got that, he'd have had a good chance of getting the red and getting on the black. But oh my God, he's made it so hard for himself. That was so, that was so straightforward. He didn't have to do anything. Didn't have to develop anything. Mm. He didn't even have to develop the black because of that red that was near the side cushion. He could have dropped right in behind the black and just rolled it down the cushion. I don't, I don't know what. I just. You know, I don't know what his mindset was, or the way he was addressing that clearance, but it was wrong, whatever he was trying to think of, because he was just... I don't know if he felt, felt like he's trying to make stuff happen or what, but... 
he should, he's got to be disappointed for not taking it out from that situation. So Simon's in a slightly different situation. He's got, he's not got really got that great a natural ball to land on the black. I think he'll probably end up playing the, the yellow that's kind of third up from the bottom cushion and just kind of stunning in behind it. But I might not end up being that way. Actually, he's come a bit thin on this yellow, so he might have to try and go through the gap of the two yellows in the middle of the table. Well, not middle of the table, the um, by the black spot. Mm. Try and leave himself on the low, on the one at the bottom of the table. And no, he's changed his pattern, which is probably a good move. That's nicely played. That's the difference, see, that was an... He pl Simon plays a lot of what I like to call kill shots, where you, you're playing quite an angled shot, but you're playing it in such a way that the, the cue ball doesn't fly around the table. You're killing it off the cushion by playing it with a lot of backspin and check side and not hitting it very hard. And that's how you control the white, by playing lots of shots like that where you stop the white ball flying around the table. You're trying to keep the white ball movement as, to as little as possible. And he set himself up to take this top red into the top right and then... Uh, yellow into the top right, sorry. He's actually, and he's then actually got a bit of a funny angle here because if he screws, plays this like a natural screw shot, he's coming to the wrong side of the yellow. So I think he's looking at playing, screwing past the yellow and yeah, playing it in the middle. Overrun that slightly, but he should. I think he can just about kill the white off the cushion. Again, same sort of shot, lots of backspin, play it softly, but have lots of right hand side and try and kill the white off the cushion. Oh, he's gone straight into the black. Skill. Oh. <laughs> but he's glad he potted that yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was risky, but that was a nice shot. That's one way to finish the frame. You put your object ball, last object ball and the black at the same time. Yeah, I think Josh has just found himself in a whole new environment really oh, I, don't know. I don't know if Josh thinks he's won, uh, thought he won that game for a second or something mm, uh, maybe Simon's Simon just explained something but yeah obviously skill shot you yeah can skill the shot the black in on, as long as you yeah. put your last ball with it Ten one. Well, it's a solid break. It looks looks dry, unfortunately. Yeah, that was a really good break. It was quite unfortunate not to get a ball there. Mm. It split beautifully. Yeah, I just feared Josh has come against a different class of animal on the pool table in well, did, Simon did, Flaxman. Yeah, he did just um, just come over and said he was unlucky, which there is an element of truth to that, but. Um, I think if he watches this back, if he tries to be really analytical about it, he realises that a lot of the... Oh, that's, he'll be disappointed with that shot. If he, if he tries to like be really honest with himself, there's been a lot of chances where it wasn't bad luck, it was just careless shots, or it was not given the shot, a shot that was more difficult than it looked and not giving it the level of care and attention than it needed. Mm. You get that a lot, especially on... You know, if you've got like... Like this red, for example, here, right? I mean, you could play for the red that's just near the black spot in the middle of the table but you've got you have to kill the white so well to do it it'll probably fly up the table and then what's he played for here yeah I mean I mean what what, what was he playing for there he's played it with run inside and he's ain't coming towards one ball which was masked by the black so uh, how was he going to have a chance to land on it Yeah, see, I've just seen that back again, and I just don't see how he could have played that shot. And it was almost ten to one to get a shot on another red after that, playing it in that way. So he could think he's unlucky in that shot. I mean, some shots he's been genuinely unlucky. He was unlucky to pot the white a few times. Things haven't worked out. But in that instance, it's just just a lack of understanding about what's going to happen. Meanwhile, Mr. Flaxman has got another fairly straightforward chance to win the game. Mm. And especially how dangerous uh, your opponent can be coming back to the table once you've left it. Like if you're in a uh, 
if you're in a pool environment that isn't as um, serious as some of the players up here are about the game. See, well, just look at that shot he just played there. He played instead of just rolling that ball in and letting the white go to the middle of the table, he's played it with bottom and right hand side to kill to kill the white and leave himself a shot on this yellow mm. and you've got to play those shots you see the top players are really good players so even that shot wasn't controlled enough if they're playing these kill shots almost every shot yeah you're trying to hold the cue ball and stopping it from um, in their mind there's go. a there's a circle with like a couple of inch radius that they see on the table where the cue ball needs to end up every single time yeah and so if they don't get it in that circle they're going to be kicking themselves and yeah so you you learn to play these sort of touchy shots because they're the, sometimes that's the only way you can get into the position that you need to be for the next one. So he's, but even then, even then, the way that he's playing, he's still lost the white here and left himself a bit of a horrible shot. He's got to cut this in and try and knock the skim off the yellow and going off. Oh, he's played the thin one in the corner. Oh, that's a bit of a result. It's a bit fortunate there. Played that shot the right way. Just a bit unlucky to nudge that red. I think he could have got a snooker out of that if he'd have. Well, on another day. But he has left a chance for Simon to win the game again. And Simon the fancy this shot. And he's just got to draw it back a little bit just to hold. Ooh, can't hear you for a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How's that? That's better. Yeah, photography enthusiast there. So you can't let Flaxman on the table. Fantastic shot. Very thoughtful player. That was really nicely played that shot, because he only needed to he needed to screw back, or he needed he needed to kind of kill the white on the red, which was he could have ended up on the wrong side of it. But he come the tendency when you're digging down like that, you can end up over screwing the shot. But he played that really nicely. Only put like a couple of inches of backspin on that, left that. That was beautifully played, it really was. Our stream sponsor today, QL Q Sports, Mr. Flaxman's own. Get in touch if you would like some WPBSA certified coaching. Mr. Flaxman's own. Flaxman, not sorry, Ayers. Oh. You both got the same first name, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> and I've had four beers, damn it. <laughs> Well, Flaxman's got a yellow that. No, Flaxman runs a. He's a. Um, he's a gym uh, personal trainer. Personal trainer, yeah. Flaxman PT. And he starts at like 4 a.m. as well. It's madness. And he eats dumbbells for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a very serious individual. Yes, that's another excellent break as well. This is a great chance. To be fair, I think 11-1 flatters Mr. Flaxman a lot. But I'd like to hope this is a bit of a... I mean, he's not going to see it, but I hope, I hope Josh watches this back and um, tries watching it back and, and take out the sort of the world is against me sort of thought and see see if he can see ways where where he's kind of let it slip away yeah given given opportunities or easy opportunities to Simon to get back that into the frame so just going to throw that out there that was a really good shot to kill the white hit the right cannon on that yellow and not lose the cue ball that was another excellent shot that was a careless one though because now he's wrong side of this yellow but I think he can screw back through the gap this is the difference see Simon Flaxman is probably as good a potter as Josh is but his cue ball is phenomenal and that's why he's such a good player, and that's that's why that's why the best you know like the best pool player in the world, Mick Hill, is the best pool player in the world because he's got the best cue ball, not mm. because he's not because he's the best potter, because he makes the pots easy. 
Yeah, he doesn't play a difficult shot. Yeah. He doesn't go out of line. <laughs> it's, it's not about <laughs> how difficult a shot you can pull off. It's about how easy you can make your shot. Yeah, it really should only be playing one difficult shot a game. You can't control where the balls land after the break. So that should be your only difficult shot. Yeah. Unless you've got to develop something. But if the balls are open, the only difficult shot you should end up with is the first one. You get you pot that shot, you get yourself in position. This should be straightforward from then on. Only watch that clearance there. That's exactly what happened. Cue ball was beautifully controlled. Never had a difficult pot. This is how you need to play the game. And it's dis he's making it look easy. But the hardest bit about the game is making it look easy. Yeah. There's such a level of skill that he's exuding there to control the white in such a way. You need, you need to have such control on your cue action to be able to kill the white on long, thin shots. But the, the trouble with it is it's like, uh, unless you know what you're looking at, <laughs> unless you know what you're looking at, it looks really easy. And it, you could just start thinking, oh, well, you know, Simon's just had a load of easy clearances. Well, that's not the case. I mean, Simon's had some easier clearances, but because his cue ball's so good, he hasn't had to make anything happen, really. You can, whereas Josh had a really easy clearance a couple of games back, he didn't control the cue ball and left, left himself in no man's land, from, which can happen really easily. Well, he's got a red down there. So these have opened very nicely. Doesn't look like he's got a shot on a red though. Yeah. I'm gonna have to take the yellow here down yeah, to I bottom think you've right. Got to go yellows here. Yellows look quite good though. Just the one on the bottom cushion really needs developing. Yeah, okay, and again that's a case of you need to plan that out properly. You've got to get there off of the one that's on the bottom left. Um, you know, this needs a bit of care and attention, but once you suss that out, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, he's definitely a competent potter. He's got that part of his game. This could go wrong. And it did. I just that was maybe, maybe you can get a plant up the top. Yeah, I know, but, but instantly from a decent position, he's having to play an almost impossible shot. Yeah, the odds are against you at that point. And it's all, it all stemmed from the first shot. I've just seen it back in the re replay there. Um, if he'd have just got straight in on this yellow, he wouldn't have had to play a cannon into those two balls. Which could go wrong. He could have he could have landed on those two balls from the one over the corner. It just he lost the cue ball on the first shot and it changed the way he had to play the game and then he's suddenly having to play shots that are crazy difficult. Ball from the first shot. Centimeters make all the difference in cue ball control in this game. That's a lovely shot. I mean, maybe we should blame Simon Flaxman here. Maybe he went and lost a few uh, ten pound money matches easily. And uh, shark Josh <laughs> in there. Who knows? You see that shot that he just played there? Yeah. It was like a nice little stun shot. But not like there's a couple of ways that you could have played that to land on the red. But he's played it and he's slid past the yellow. He's not got awkward queuing and he's got an angle on the red to come up the table. Yeah. It's like the difference in position between getting that one or two inches out and getting it there has changed the way he has to play the next shot. It makes such a difference. He has actually got a natural angle to come down the table. This is a very tricky shot. He needs to judge this very nicely. Yeah, he needs to get on the right-hand side of this table. Oh, that was a bit unfortunate there with a kiss on the yellow. Nicely. If he'd have got a full ball kiss on that yellow, he'd have been on the red in the middle. But he prob he's probably of the opinion that it doesn't matter what he does. Because the way Josh is going at the moment... This is probably looking like quite a difficult clearance on yellows. He's probably yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna have a punt at trying to cut it in the middle half heartedly. And all he has to do is make sure he leaves it potable for his next return. Yeah, so I mean it's how the way he's playing that as well. He's looking at rather than just kind of going off the cushion and splitting the difference of the potting angle, he's actually looking at playing it with side spin, so he's coming at it towards well I know he's playing. Yeah, so he's coming at it towards the pocket. That's so he doesn't lose the cue ball too far up the table that he can't pot the other red. Mm. If he does get it in, yeah. Let's see what you can do out of this. this you could develop this ball. Well, he okay. could have got into that. You can actually play that shot on these tables, but he could have popped that yellow off the cushion 
and being on one of the ones up the table. Now he's going to. Well, that's probably the best thing he could have done, to be honest. Let Simon Flaxman sweat it out because I don't feel like Josh is able to clear these balls up with that yellow there. just take his medicine just double this up the table and leave it in the bottom right corner mm. because well, yeah or he could well, he could play it now yeah, it looks like that's what he's playing no, he's just leaving it in the middle of the table it's not as if he's scrabbling to keep up in this match he's what well, I said he's just ahead. said well okay over to you Josh take it out it's very difficult to get nicely on this yellow at the bottom of the table almost I think the probably the best ball to do it yeah. He's got himself a snooker there. Yes, yeah, that might not be a bad choice. I think almost think the best the best ball to do that to get onto that yellow is the one near the black. You could leave the white somewhere near the top cushion, about parallel with that yellow. You could cut that in. Yeah, if you could leave the white on the top cushion parallel with that yellow near the black he could cut that in and drift down the table he's going to try and play the double plant this is all or nothing he's looks good it. great shot well done that's a ball player's shot right there yeah, that was a nice shot it was all or nothing but he nailed it so now he's got a chance to win <laughs> and he's done well to maintain position there that was, that was a nice shot but it was a really risky way of playing it <laughs> I think he could just I think he could just dink this in with a backspin and hold for the yellow in the middle mm. yeah and then take the black down to the bottom right yeah it's done well win this game Well done, that was a good finish now. That was good though, he took the ball by the horns playing the um, double. Yeah, definitely. I think his young lady's arrived. Maybe she'll uh, rub some luck off on him. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Josh win a few more games, make it a bit closer. Just, mm. just to kind of see, see a bit more of what he's got, really. We got yellow down there. That's a good break. It's a nice spread. That's a lovely break. Played that really well. He's got an easy red to start off with if he wants them, but there's a bit of work to do with the reds here. Yeah, this one on the right side cushion's a bit awkward. Mm. Yeah, actually. He might end up doubling that in the middle. Either that, I suppose the one that's near the spot. He could pop that one and try and kick that out, but you'd have to hit it quite hard. Mm, really he's got a red into the middle. But yeah, still those yellow... That Got a couple of yellows covering that red he just nudged there. Yeah, I didn't quite, didn't quite get the right kiss on it. It was tricky to try. And, I didn't, didn't even consider he'd play that shot because it, it was so difficult to get a nice kiss on that red. Uh, what's he got? He's gonna have to play the one in the middle, I think. Oh no! Can you see enough of this one to pot it? Must be able to. Oh no! He's just decided to take the pocket. Josh could actually win the game from this position because he could pop the one that's near the bottom right, play it with top and right hand side, and kick straight into that red and yellow. Well, that's a lovely a good double shot as well. He could still play that shot now if he sees it because he should at least have a shot on the one in the middle pocket if he plays it. I'm just going to try and get into it from here. This is a bit less likely to work out. Oh, that's worked out right though. Yeah. I thought that playing it like that, he wouldn't be able to move the red enough, but it's just bumped off the jaws. This is a, this is a chance. Oh, 
was a bit careless. Has to play the one bottom right now. I think I'll be playing this to top spin, touch the left hand side, trying to come past the red that's near the middle pocket, off the bottom cushion, and back out again. It's a bit of a touchy shot. He's playing it with backspin, don't know about that. Oh, he's going to hold. Oh, that was, that's pretty nicely played, actually. That was a nice shot. He's just got to get onto this last yellow now. He needs to be on the right-hand side of the table. Oh, he's come yeah. down for it. Oh, he made a mess of that. That oh, was the wrong dear. shot. He should have played that with top spin and come across the side cushion. Yeah. The, although that row of reds there, it was almost impossible to thread through those. Yeah, that's basically where he should have been leaving the cue ball. So Sama needs to move this yellow so he can put his red. It's interesting the way he played that. That's not the best shot. I think he's got one in the middle there, hasn't he? Yeah, and he can just drop down for this uh, bottom red into the middle again probably yeah that was nice another good opportunity to win the game again that was a I was hoping Josh would have got that clearance then I just um, yeah again that, that shot, there was no way he should have been playing that shot the way he played it to try and dig down, cut this red in the middle and try and screw up to the top cushion and back out again. It's a bit of a horrible shot this. Kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe he thinks he can pop this and drift past the black. Well, no, a chance for Josh here. Hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a soft giveaway of the table. Shh, I fancy him to get this. Any sort of shot where he can just let his arm go, I feel like he's going to get it. Yeah. Anything that, he, that needs like a really controlled cue action and delivery, I'm not sure. Yeah, if the cue ball's just got a natural trajectory just to do what it needs to do. and Yeah, but when it comes to the more nuanced control. But he's made it 12-3, so it's two frames in a row. Yeah, Simon, Simon doesn't do it too bothered about that. <laughs> Which I guess at 12-3 he probably wouldn't be. No, he's only got five more frames to win. Come on then, Josh. Let's see if we can get a decent break. Keep the cue ball on the table. Have a good chance. Oh, he's got a black down, so he's going to scratch the break. He rack, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if only that gave you the win. Yeah. I like that rule. Well, you wouldn't do never never do me any good because I always pot the white on every break anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good break though. He's breaking well actually. They're just not. They're not really splitting. Well, that's not true. True, they are splitting well, but there's not many balls going down. There are quite a few dry breaks. Like I can understand a dry break on um, Simon's break because he's not hitting the balls very hard. But. Oh, and the cue balls launched off there. He got a red and a yellow down. Yeah, that's a shame. Caught it a bit thin, didn't he? Didn't hit, get a solid contact on. That's the trouble with playing the second ball break, and that's why I can't. I honestly, I can't do it. I swear, every third break, I chip, chip the white straight off the table. <laughs> it's really hard to do. To get that much power into the balls, hitting the second ball down rather than the front ball, is really difficult. Mm. Again, they've split beautifully, so you've got to think that Simon's going to be getting pretty close to taking these out if he if he doesn't. He certainly expect himself to do so. Oh, 
Well, I'd like to thank our 24 viewers for tuning in for this match. It's very much appreciated. If you could show your appreciation by liking the video and subscribing to our channel on YouTube and maybe giving us a like on Facebook too, that would be much appreciated. He's just deliberating over his first shot because it kind of dictates the pattern he's playing. I think I'd play the one in the right middle and leave myself kind of straight-ish on the one in the left middle. But it just the trouble playing that one in the right middle is it's a bit missable. So you don't really want to play it, but I don't think it goes in the left middle. Well, it might even be going yellows, actually. Oh yeah, it was two yellows that went down. I think John has just, uh, Josh has just run off for a uh, refreshment, isn't he? I think that's why uh, Simon's waiting here. Mm, it's going yellows. Yeah, that was a trouble, yellows. It had an awkward opening shot, but he might choose to go reds now. don't know that that's what he played but if he did that's a really good shot but well he certainly tied a yellow up maybe that was part of his plan opening shot tie a yellow up no, and I start mean, down I the bottom the, of the um, table for the reds he played. He, looked, he played it with check side I just can't believe that he played to land there but it worked out really nicely four straightforward shots and he's got another game in the bag I don't know if he's got a full pocket past this yellow. So he doesn't really want to play the one top right because it's awkward bridging. Oh, he's looking at just rolling it in, I think. Yeah, the fact that he's not just getting down and hitting this one. Well, I suppose the position's awkward if he plays the one top left. He's, playing a, he's having to play a thin shot. Yeah, that was nicely played. It's funny because it's not that difficult a shot, but you kind of talk yourself into thinking, is it the right way to go? If it just has a little element of trickiness about it. But really, it wasn't that tricky at all, but you can kind of talk yourself into thinking it is. Well, he's done fantastically there with that reverse dish. Yep, another solid clearance. And Simon Flaxman is 13-3 ahead against Josh Barnes here. Maybe the biggest mismatch we've had on Rocket Rackers TV so far. But hopefully Josh can dig in. He's got a few frames under his belt now. Maybe realises now that Simon is not going to take any prisoners. As Flaxman breaks, frame 17. On well, the cue ball, try to take off, but he's got a red down. That's interesting. I thought his break was working with the um, the soft break, but he chose to go for a front ball break. Well, again, this is another clearance that's on. It's a little bit congested in the middle of the table, but I think all those reds go. Yeah. Just need to plot in about a bit. I don't think he'll go yellows. I think if anything, it probably his first red to the second red is the, probably the most awkward shot. He might go for the one, you know, I was going to say he might play, play the one in the bottom right of the table rather than the easier one top left just because it leads him to, oh no, he's going to go yellow as well. I'm a bit surprised by that actually. Especially now where he's left the cue ball. He's going to have to play the one above the black. And it's going to be, hmm, this could push something safe here. I'm surprised he's not gone reds, but I mean yellows aren't that difficult. It just seemed a lot more, I don't know, just a lot trickier to try and manoeuvre around with the yellows. And again, I think he's going to have to play the one on the bottom cushion. 
which is tricky potting. No, that was a nice shot. Well, they seem to have opened out all right, so I think he should be able to get this clearance, but... That's what we're looking at. Right middle, bottom left. Don't know how straight he is. He might have to screw straight back, but it looks like he's got a bit of angle, so I don't know if he might mm. have to try and punch it up the table and leave the one above the black or something. I wonder if that yellow goes in the left middle. It's got quite a big margin to land on it. But mind you, if he's not, he goes in the left middle, you'd think he'd play it now. It's not, it's not good. Not quite what he wanted there. I think, I think what he can, if it goes in the left middle, what he can play is he can play like something called a stun run through. So get the white to come straight up into the red and then have enough top spin on it that it spins forward off of the red. So push the red up past the black, hopefully not into the other red, and then have the white run forward and leave yourself in the yellow in the left centre. It's a bit of a tricky shot though, but it is a, it is a possibility. So you're looking at playing off the red to try and straighten the pot up. Yeah, see, I don't think, I think if he had gone for reds, he wouldn't have had to do anything like this. I think the reds just, when they, if you'd have gone for reds, they, if you, once you start picking them up, they just kind of open the table out. Wow, that was such a tough shot he attempted there. Okay, well, it's a slightly tricky clearance opportunity for Josh. Yeah, he's probably going to have to come up the table and take this... Uh, I don't know what he's looking at here. Into cutting this down. And doubling it across. Oh, well, it was a good effort, but I can't believe that was the right shot. But Simon doesn't have a shot here. Uh... He might just try and get this yellow in front of the pocket, maybe. Yeah. Well, not a bad effort. It wasn't very easy to get it in front of the red. I didn't really have a lot else. So actually, it looks like, looking at the table, he's got enough of a gap that he can play the red to the bottom left. So this is actually now a really good chance for reds. He's just got one tricky red, which is the one just to the blow and to the left of the black. But it go, it'll, if he pots the red that's next to it, it will go in the right center. Sorry, left center. So, just has to get the order of pots right again. You notice how he's he's taken a lot more time about this though, which is a good thing, I think. That's kind of worked out all right, I think. It's good to see him trying to. He's actually trying to plan it out rather than just start potting balls and see what happens like he was doing earlier in the match mm. it's definitely essential and this is a tricky pot this one and the cue ball's clattering straight into the other red it could go end up, end up in the top corner I think he can just pop that one past the yellow and just screw across the table for the one in the bottom left corner, can't he? I mean, he'd probably be all right from this shot, but it has got a bit of bit of risk to it. I mean, the red could come off the cushion and then kick the white straight in the side pocket or something funny like that. Or he could look, skim off that second red and go in the top left corner. Or he could end up on the top cushion and not really have a good shot. Or he could even miss the pot because it's not the easiest shot. Ooh. I did say it would go close to that corner, didn't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did say it could end up on the top cushion. <laughs> just, um, you know, I don't think I'd have played that.
good shot. A bit unfortunate there, actually. He played that well because he had to get across the face of that other red. So that was, that was actually, that was a good shot that went unlucky rather than being a bad shot, I think. Yeah, and these uh, yellows look quite straightforward for Simon. I think there's a bit of contention about if this is a touching ball or not. He's in a bit of trouble here, to be honest. If he's not got a touching ball, which it doesn't look like he has. I don't know if he could, sk I mean, I don't know if he could skim off that ball and try and knuckle him on the yellows. He could screw off that ball by digging down on the white and try and go two cushions and leave him on top of the red, but almost whatever he tries is, is odds against getting a good result here. I think like he's going to try, pop, he's gonna try and pop this red, isn't he? Well, this could get a cube, cube ball. Where's it going? Ooh. Honestly, that's probably about as good as he could have done there. He could have done, could have, could have tried getting a, a really t difficult snooker, but at least by doing that, he's left his ball in a better spot. And Simon just weighing up the plant. Yeah, she knows just a bit out of the pocket. He could could double kiss this and it not go in I mean you think he's odds on to pot it but he could mess this up slightly he also doesn't want to lose the cute the um, yellow onto the bottom cushion I no, didn't play it in the end lost the white a little bit but should be all right I just stroke this one in mm. oh, a chance for Josh here yeah, I think that shot he should have played it with um Follow, so just above centre, a bit of top spin, just stroked it in, left the w let the white come across the table a bit more, but played it in a more positive way. It's a bit touchy playing that long drag shot. Let's get enough backspin in this. Yeah, well, he's on good. it, but he didn't hold the white properly. That's a nice shot. Nice and finish. Josh Barnes takes another frame to make it 13 4. Just a mind you all, you're watching a money match day, Blackpool Pool money matches. We bring you a big money match day three or four times a year. This morning we had a big pot between Jack Coop and Neil Baker. £8,600 there. And now you're watching Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes for yeah, £400. I'm, su I'm surprised that match this morning ended up with such a big gap between the scores when they were so close at 12 12, 12 was it? Yeah, it was 11 all and then, yeah, just... Uh, I think they got a 12 12 as well after the interval. But yeah, Neil just was able to find another gear, really. And I think Jack just got in his head. And Josh Barnes has broke frame 18 well, with a red he's down. He's a ball, but he's got a horrible break. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. He just needs need something easy, and this is not easy. That's a great shot, but that only keeps him at the table. He needs a few more good shots yet. I don't know if he, he can could probably pick this one up. I don't know if the one that's next to the yellow, if it looks like from here, in, it's hard to tell from where we're at if that goes past the yellow in the top corner. It's I think it might just go. Yeah. If he can, he can, he can kill the white on the yellow. I think if he rolls that in and just skims off the yellow, he'll have an angle to pot the red that's near that red and get on the other two. Don't, don't really know what that was. I must have thought that was a plant or something. He must he's have just trying to kick one out there. Well, he must. The reason, the fact that he didn't go for that one in the top corner, must have meant he felt like either he couldn't see enough of it or it didn't go. 
because I can't believe he turned that down after the red he rolled in before that. So he has slightly opened these up a bit. It looks like those two yellows might just plant into the middle pocket off the side side of the jaw. He's just having a look at that now. I'll tell you what he could also do. Um, you could, if you see, you've got like those two yellows that are in a plant for the top corner of the pocket. There's a mm -hmm. yellow alongside it. If you hit that yellow directly into those, you can do something called squeezing the plant, which pushes it across. Mm. So you could, if he was in the middle of the table, he could oh, squeeze that into the pocket. I think if going this way, if anything, he's more likely to squeeze it out of the pocket. So it needs to be aiming quite, quite a bit into the jaws there. He needs to hit this firm enough that he opens the yellows out. Ooh. Yeah, so he actually squeezed that away from the pocket there because he hit it in the wrong direction. They were too close together. And he's actually left all the reds on. This is a good chance. Just needs to control the cue ball nicely. I'll keep saying that all the way through, but it's, it really is the key to this game. I think I'll be leaving this red till last, honestly. But that was Played that nicely though. That's a nice shot. Yeah, if he just tries to hold the cue ball, it'd be in a nice position for this uh, yeah, the uppermost actually, red. He actually got that cue ball absolutely perfect there. So he just wants to make sure he leaves himself just off straight, um, but the right side of the um, last red, because he doesn't really want to be playing a long black down the rail. He wants to try and get the cue ball quite close to it. Nah, no, that's pretty good. All right, left himself straight, but I don't think he could have gone much further than that without going behind the yellow. Oh, that's so unfortunate. I hope that isn't because of the shouting. Yeah, it can be a bit off-putting that. I don't think it was, was anyone watching this match, was it? No, I think they're just playing a game by themselves. Just a few nutbags out in the crowd. If that, if that put him off, that's a real shame, it really is. So he doesn't want to let the cue ball run. Well, actually, I suppose he could play for the t one at the top of the table now. He wouldn't want to try and hold that for the other one. No. A li little bit short, but the only worry with this one is I think I think I'll be playing this round three cushions. But you can you can can kind of overcut this one, and then it kind of bobbles out of the pocket. I definitely wouldn't be rolling this in and leaving a thin shot. Definitely be playing the cue ball around three cushions here. Oh, he did exactly what I said. Yeah, if he could kind of overcut that one and bobble it out. No, oh, he's going to let Josh pot the black. He didn't want to take it away from him. Oh, will he? No, he's just forfeited it. Oh, stole his thunder. I don't like that. I always let the guy pot the black. I feel like yeah. you're trying to be kind of stealing their, taking away a little bit of their like victory there. Sense of completion for the, yeah. the frame I that think you it's need. A bit of a, I don't know. I, I, or maybe I read too much into stuff. I feel like when you do that, it's a bit of a. Um, you're like taking back the power a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They do. It. I mean, I've seen some tournaments. And they won't let you do that. You, you have to pot the ball. They won't let. They'll um, penalise you for not letting the guy finish the game. I mean, that's probably a bit overzealous, but I think it's the right way to approach it. Well, it's like a, you know, potting balls is like emotionally rewarding, isn't it? Potting the black the most, so I imagine yeah, of exactly. all of them. Yeah, you win your game. You got a little sense of accomplishment. Yeah, kind of peters out a bit if you just get gifted with the game. Yeah. I like I said, I'll probably overthink everything about this sport. <laughs> what do I know? Well, everything has an effect, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a good pot from off the cushion. This is actually man manufactured a good chance for Reds. If he can pot this long straight one in the right middle and leave himself okay on the double. This is another good chance. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a nice shot. So he just wants to pot this one and kind of hold the cue ball, don't let it slip. Oh, he's going to go cushion first and just be on the one on the top right. Oh, yeah, I think I'd have tried holding that. Still got a chance to clear these up, but it's a lot trickier now. He's going to have to play bottom left, one in the middle, and then try and leave himself some sort of shot on that one in the top right, or or maybe even leave the one on the side cushion for it in the top left, and then try and get on the black. Hmm. In fact, I think what I would try doing here, I think I'll pot the, pot the one bottom left, leave the cue ball where it is, and tr actually go round, pot this red in the right centre and try and try and find like the gap between the three yellows and so I'm cutting the red in, in the top right. It's a really touchy shot though. Yeah, I think you, you might just play for it in the top left here. Oh, that's a great shot. That's a fantastic shot. Oh, he's definitely got the angle to come down for this black. That's a really great shot. Two cushions and out for the black. Oh, he just missed the red. Oh, and he's not all the hard work there. Yeah, Sorry. and he's not covering that pocket either. It's a, it's a bit of no. work here for Josh. Might might be beneficial just to take the snooker. Yeah, this is one of those situations. He hasn't really got a nice opening shot, so he might just have to take his medicine. But he'll take a oh, an attempt to triple there and. Simon Ooh, can hit this red, but I don't think he can pot it. I think he's been a bit fortunate there, because that yellow stopped him going one cushion and trying to cut the red in. Oh, he thought he could pot it. Oh, that's unlucky. Oh, fantastic chance of Josh again. Couldn't be any easier. The good thing about this chance, this is what he needed earlier in the match, really, is that these balls are so open that it almost doesn't matter what pattern you take, you, you can make it work. Yeah, there's barely one yellow in the way of another. And you know, he's the thing he's he seems to be best at is like just hitting through the ball without not really any sort of like finesse. He just like that, you know, just kind of hitting through the ball. And because these balls are so in the middle of the table and open, you can hit them quite positively without having to try and. I mean, he did try playing a delicate shot there, but he didn't really have to do that. Not sure if we could stun round the back of this red, round two cushions. Oh, he's just rolled it in. Mm, didn't, for somebody who likes hitting the ball firm, he played a played an overly delicate shot on that yellow. Should have. Um, he should have dug down on it and come round the two cushions around the back of the red and left himself a decent shot. Ooh, Simon would be disappointed with that one though. It was a tricky shot but he would have fancied getting that. Well, he's left the cue ball not too bad a spot there actually. Yeah it's a bit difficult for Josh to he might play a he might just actually play a snooker here and just come skim off this yellow he's nearest. Just just because I just don't think he's got a nice shot. I think he's got him. Yeah. Yeah, normally I don't like just playing a snooker for the sake of playing a snooker, but it's almost a case of that he just didn't he didn't have a better shot. Oh, that's a long way out. He'd have been trying to get the cue ball in behind that red, I think. Two cushions. Oh, that's careless. Because he didn't play anything with the white either. I think he's just about all right on this yellow. I think I'd have played a shot off of that red to get on that, to be honest. He doesn't want to be straight. Oh, God, that's he's gonna quite what? straight. Does it go past the black? Doesn't I think like so. It. Maybe it does. If it doesn't, he's going to have to screw up and down the table, which is a horrible shot. Oh, it was a great effort. The problem with those acute angles, though, they don't like the power. Yeah. And they'll bounce out every day. Yeah, you have to cue those so sweetly to get the action, but not hit it too hard that the pocket rejects the ball. 
And will Simon end up behind the yellow? No. Oh, it looks perfect. It's a great shot. That's a bit of a shame for Josh here. Well, I say, I mean, I say it was, but it was his first shot and his two shots was really careless. All right, it was a bit unfortunate to land plumb straight on that yellow up the cushion, but his first shot out of his two shots was a shocker, really. Mm. Yeah, and Simon Edge is closer to that all important 17. He's now 14-5 ahead. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm sure Josh would be very disappointed, but I think 14-5 is a pretty fair reflection of how this game's gone, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just been a, it's just been a golfing class between the two of them at English Pool. That's, that's, that's quite a high rack. It's very high. That rack was very high up, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, some of the flagsmen don't seem too bothered, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, we're not referees, we're just observers. Uh, so, not too bad on yellows, but his opening shot's not very nice because he's on the cushion, so he could end up putting one of these yellows safe. Yeah. Does that happen? That's, yeah, see, that's... But this is the thing, like, when you play pool regularly, you become aware of those sort of shots. And I just don't... I've just... You know, I'd have tried everything in my power... Oh, that was unlucky. I'd have tried everything in my power not to let tie that yellow up. Or if you're going to play it, play the, if you know the red's going into the yellow, play it harder so it pushes the yellow away. Yeah. Yeah, positive action in there. Not the easiest table for Reds. I think if you can open these two up with this shot. Ooh. I think it's <laughs> just about on. Does it go? Well, judging by his body language, it seems like it goes. Oh, it just snatched at that one a little bit. You would have wanted to come back further than that. I mean, he's got to try. I think he's got to try and pot this off of the right side of the pocket and get it to slide in off the jaw. But now he's got to kind of play it with top and right hand side so he doesn't kick into the yellows. So. Should be all right, but yeah, I thought that was okay. But oh, he's found some gap there. That's a hell of <laughs> I don't think that's what he played, but that was a hell of a result. I mean, he's acting like this red goes in the bottom right, the one that's stuck on the yellow. Yeah, I think it does. I think it's Im impeding the yellow going in, but it goes in itself by the looks of it. Yeah, so he does keep looking at it. It must be tight. Maybe he thinks he can get it off the... Well, he's not really going to be able to get into it now. He needs so much left-hand side on that to be able to just nudge that red if he had to. So he must be playing the try and pot it. Nice little kiss off the black as well. Let's just straighten the shot up. I think because these pockets are quite slidey in the jaws, I think as long as he can get it inside the jaws, it'll slide in. Oh, he actually, actually had a full pocket. Yeah. I think he was just making a meal out of that, wasn't he? <laughs> Just wants to seem more impressive than he is. Was yeah. <laughs> well, that a dish? Ooh, I, I think so, isn't it? I think you just mopped them up. No, I think that was... Was that Josh's break? No, it must, be, it must have been Josh's break because Simon's racking him up now, isn't it? Yeah. That was another really good clearance there, though. Yeah, he didn't... You know... It didn't look like much because he was quite blasé about the way he went round playing it, but he did. That, that was a really good clearance. Played all the shots nicely. Every one of those shots, it, what you can't just like roll it in, play it centre ball. He's, uh, you're kind of, you play, you know, you're playing shots with a little bit of check side to kill the white or to change the angle. It's coming off the cushion. They're all like really delicate shots that he's so used to playing that you don't notice he's doing them. 
This is frame 21, Simon Flaxman to break. Back with a soft second ball break. Got a yellow down. Barnes has done well to pull back a few games. When the chips are down, Flaxman has a quality of game to keep powering ahead. Yeah, I agree. He's done, he's done well to win five games, to be honest. So the ones that he has won, he's won them pretty well, I think. And there was a few more he could have had. If yeah. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's had, had a bit more of a pool player now, it's about him. Yeah, exactly. He's, kind of, he's had a few games where he's kind of snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, hasn't he? Mm. So again, even though these are a bit clustered, I think all these reds are have a pocket so this yeah. is another good chance but this is the sort of clearance that I just don't think that I don't fancy Josh to be able to take because it needs very close control of the cue ball and uh, just he hasn't demonstrated that he's got that at the moment he needs the balls to be open and he needs lots of space around them so he can let his stroke go whereas Simon Flaxman is quite happy playing delicate little shots and little stuns and screws and finding little gaps and coming at the right angle and that's why he's such a good player I'm surprised he's going for this one and not the one over the corner. Oh, I guess it's just I guess he just got that out of the way while he could. Doesn't want to land straight on this red. Like that. <laughs> what did I just say? You never listen to me. Has he got a play here? He's I got think he's got a little bit of angle there. Well he's either got to play for the red up the top. Well, yeah, that's all I was going to say. Or he's got to try and play the spin with left-hand side through a screw back off the side cushion with left-hand side and find a gap. Or does he think he can stun up the table? No. This could bounce. I was going to say, I hit the red, but he beat me to it. But he's actually worked out all right. Yeah, he's just got to get through this. Yeah, through that's these the yellows onto the last red now. Yeah, this is, um, I'd say he's odds. I'd say it's... 60 40 odds against it, he lands up with a nice shot on this red. He wants to hit the black, doesn't he? he wants a if good he can, contact. If on he can the get black. through that gap and get on the black, that's okay. I thought he'd have to try and push the yellows out of the way, but he can't hit this ball hard into that angle of the pocket. Well, at least he's not snookered, but I, I think that yellow stops the red. He might be able to, I can't really tell, he might just be able to get it in the top left if he plays it with, mind you, he wouldn't really want to be playing it with right hand side, bridging over the yellow. You might even double this, you know. Yeah, up and down. Well, he didn't think he was going to get that. He didn't even play a positional shot on the black. I think he just, I think he was just half-heartedly thought he'd have a go at it, sort of thing. <laughs> well, there's a yellow into the middle here for Josh. So, so he pots this one, this opens the balls out. So again, this is the sort of situation. He doesn't really have to do anything with the cue ball. So he should be fancy in taking these out. Just have to keep it together. He's a lot more controlled now. I think that ball would have been going in about three times that pace earlier in the match. He would have slammed that into the pocket. I think he's, you can see him kind of actually learning the game as he's playing it. A bit. Yeah, maybe he's just not come up against a, a player like Simon before. Probably not, probably not, to be honest. He probably plays people quite local to him and he probably t takes them apart quite Pub easily. players, yeah. But you see the, the way that Simon plays, you know, the, even though he's hitting the cue ball positively, the cue ball isn't moving around very much. That's the key. He's getting a lot of, lot of action on the ball without hitting it hard mm. and then you can control the whites so easily and you've got so many more shots yeah that was a nice finish there so Even if he'd come into the match with uh, just a temperament like that then he probably wouldn't be so far behind no I agree I think he, I think there's a few games earlier on in the match he would have won if he played like that mm. there's nothing wrong with playing fast as long as you're still con under control yeah and that was much more I mean that, honestly that clearance was a different person to the guy it was it might have been his nil down finest frame of the match so far yeah yeah and the rack's in a good position this time as well so 
So it's frame 22. Josh Barnes to break. Got red down. Oh, the That's white's down. Want the black to go down. Ah, oh, <laughs> could have been hoping for a scratch break then. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's a horrible ball to, uh, pocket to end up with cue ball in because mm. this is actually a very gettable table. I think I prefer yellows. But with his opening shot, he mm. kind of needs to do something about that bottom right corner. Yeah, so I guess he's going to play the yellow off the cushion, try and kick the red out of the way. Oh, played the, I don't know about playing the plant. Oh, dear. I think he's been fortunate, actually. I think that's set straight up for the corner. I think what he should have been playing there was yellow off the side cushion, kick the red down towards the other red and leave the yellow over the corner. So what is he now? Is it still an open table or is he yellow? Oh, he had a free shot, didn't he? So oh, that was yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, so then it was an open table, so he's got fortunate he could play that. That was a nice shot in the side pocket, though. Needs another one. Awkward bridging. This is a tricky shot. Ooh. Yeah, that was just a bit difficult. But reds are a bit nasty, and he's not really got an opening shot. No. Might play a double here. Not a very nice double. He's not really got anything nice. Is he looking at playing? Oh, I'm not sure what he's playing here. Let's try I think what he could have done there is he could have played the same red. And you see the yellow that's next to the black on the top left. He could have played it off, off of the yellow and to try and cover the pocket behind the black. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't have been a bad shot. It would have, I mean, the trouble is it's risky because he could have, if he left a gap there and then he could have, Simon could have posh, pushed his yellow in behind it, but he kind of didn't really have anything anyway. Mm, this is a tough shot he's left himself there. Can't believe he didn't try and get further up the table. Yeah, that cue ball's gonna wanna come into the cushion. Yeah, look how long a bridge he's having to make on this shot. No. So once again, Josh's balls are all kind of horrible. I think he needs to do what I said, really. I think, well, I think if I'm playing this, I'm going to have to t back myself to get the red down the rail, bottom left, and then try and play the same shot. Like I said, does he think he can get that red in behind the yellow? That wouldn't be bad. don't think that's quite got it. I think he's left the plant and I think that yellow still goes. It was it almost worked out though. Well, he can get to this yellow. Yeah. I think that's Mr. Flaxman on the hill. Josh didn't really have a, a great chance in that. And basically, the only sh the only thing that I could see was that one shot that I suggested. Every everything else he had was kind of horrible there, so yeah. he was on a bit of a hiding to nothing. Whatever he played, I think sometimes it goes like that. Well, it might be quite bitter medicine for Josh. Maybe watching this back, but there'll be lots to learn from it. And hopefully, he does watch it back and and learn from it. Well, I hope what he can. I hope if he just watches himself, I hope he can see the difference between the way he's playing now and the way he was playing earlier. Mm. Just um, absolutely. I'm not talking about necessarily rushing around the table. I mean, it's one of those things actually. You, people tell you like they're the fast player and that because I think in their head they think they're like Ronnie O'Sullivan, but when you watch Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's actually normally like nowhere near as fast as these people. Yeah. Because he's got, even though he's he's fast because he's always in position he still does the pre-shot routine he still walks into the shot properly he still chalks his cue before he gets down all that sort of stuff 
but Josh is kind of it, Josh's pace is good now, I would say. And what's but more importantly, it's just respecting the um, the table and controlling the cue ball much better. And I think I think if we if we could have reset the match and started it now, I don't I think the score would be something in the order of 17-12. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd have five or six more frames to his name. I, mean, I still think Simon Flaxman is a level above in English pool, maybe not on a snooker table. But, um, yeah, I just I, I think it's been, a, hopefully Josh sees it as a bit of a learning experience for um, getting used to playing in these conditions. Oh, that was a bit of a lackadaisical shot, that one. Was he going for the other red there and just come yeah. into that red? No, he was trying to cut it in, but I think he was just trying to I don't know. I think he was just trying to worried a bit about the fact that he was hitting a second ball and then just didn't really want to put any effort into figuring out what was going to happen. So he kind of done nothing. Mm. That was a nice double there by Josh. You know, that's worked out nicely because he's got a good angle on this one at the top of the table to get on the awkward yellow. That's a nice... Oh, no, he didn't need the check side on it. <laughs> well, it's going to have to be his last shot before the black now. Yeah, this is going to be so awkward to get on. I thought this is the same as before. He's going to have to play a free rail shot off of the ball over the pocket. So difficult. He needs to get high on this last ball. Oh, he might be able to screw back with left-hand side. Come two rails, maybe three. It looks like he's OK, actually. Yeah, as long as the pocket shot, don't spit it out. I mean, uh, that, was, that was a bit of a dead hit. He didn't really get the action on that. And he didn't have any left-hand side, which he needed to go up the table. Kind of jumped off the shot a little bit there, like he didn't believe he could play it. Oh, is it going to drop? Well, it's left it over the pocket if Simon doesn't work his way around the table. That's not disastrous. He's got, Simon's got a tricky shot in the middle here. This is very missable. And he has he missed, but it was always going to cover the yellow. So, but Josh has still got another shot. So while you got, while you're still in it, you can still win it. <laughs> Very tough to hit this though, because it looks like the red covers the one rail scale. Yeah, he's going to have to go two cushions, I think, is he? And the trouble with this is, is I, even if he pots it, he's going to have no shot in the black. So he's going to be looking at playing a triple or, or God knows what in the black. This is tough. Looks good. Oh, oh and then it goes to cue ball. That's so unfortunate. Such yeah. a good hit. Really good escape though. But the trouble is he couldn't. He knew he couldn't just roll it in. He had to play it hard to try and get the white to come back out into the middle of the table. Otherwise, he was had no shot on the black. Yeah, couldn't have hit that. And, ugh, like one millimeter on that ball, other side, and that ball. White ball comes out into mm. the middle of the table. Well, these look a matter of course for Simon Flexman now. Could be looking at the last three shots of the match. Just don't leave yourself on it in the bloody corner. Yeah, yeah, this is a bit of a funny angle here, isn't it? Well, it's because it's, it can't just roll it in because it goes straight in the corner pocket. I think that's okay. Yeah, he'll cut that into the middle. Ooh, is it going to reach? Just. And that uh, Simon Flaxman wins the match. 17-6. So an interesting match there. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a mismatch, but hopefully yeah. a valuable experience for Josh. Oh yeah, fair play to Josh for stepping up. Yeah, absolutely. On hopefully uh, Simon will find a better opponent in Josh next time he plays him. I think so. I think he just needs. Um, I think. I think he'll feel at the moment that he was a bit hard done by in that game. But I think if he can kind of reflect on it. Um, you see that it just it just wasn't quite controlling the cue ball or playing the patterns properly. It just wasn't giving it 
quite enough respect for so how difficult some of the shots needed to be played, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it just, if he could tighten his cue ball up, just be a bit more controlled with his delivery and with the cue and like letting the cue ball loose, then he would have won a lot more of those games. He just had a few situations where he should have cleared up and he lost the cue ball from, from nowhere almost. Yeah, I mean, allowing Simon to get eight frames unanswered at the beginning of the match as well, that's just deadly really isn't it this yeah, is brutal plus, plus like we alluded to earlier he was playing on the stream he's playing somebody's quite experienced at this sort of match play um, so he's, he was under it from from the first he kind of tr he tried like going for the very first visit he tried like doing like a wonder clearance didn't he about 100 miles an hour yeah and when it didn't come off once that and he left quite a straightforward clearance to Simon I mean once that happened it was always a bit more diff bit too difficult then wasn't it Absolutely. It took him a while to kind of. I think it was all right net then, but it took him a while to get into the into the match. Yeah, we saw a different player in the second half, and he started picking up a few frames and trying to hold the cue ball about. And yeah, if he can if he can start his next match with that pace and and that attitude towards the ball, I think he you know he can certainly go much further in the game. Yeah, I think you. I think he would have beaten a lot of players up here as well. Yeah but he picked one of the very best players in Southampton to, to play against. So, Yeah, I would say like Josh could do, could do well in the Challenge 21. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. If he fancied tournament play, then yeah, I would recommend that to start off with. Because yeah. Simon Flaxman's a Challenge 25 player. So. It would be interesting to know if he does keep... Because I, I know he plays snooker. I've seen he was in the snooker league and like the Premier League. It would be interesting to know if, he, if this is just a dipped his foot in it now he's lost it probably might not come back or will he try and knuckle down and actually get a bit better at playing English ball for, for the game that it is itself you know yeah so so it's a couple of ways it could go he could just decide he could play another money match straight off the bat maybe have the same sort of result and then you never see him again or oh, but I hope that isn't the case I hope he do, hope he kind of um, puts a bit of work in and uh, he should be a really strong player well done, Mr. Flaxman. Yeah, very well done. Still yeah, we're still going, yeah. Just you want to say a few up. words? So, 17-6, Simon. How do you feel about that one? Yeah, it was good. Um, I think the first frame was probably the biggest turning point where he missed that black, that kind of... That settled me in, um, and then obviously I think he was a bit. He had his adrenaline was a bit rushing in the first couple of frames, and that's when I managed to pull that lead out. And from there, it was like I managed to relax a lot quicker than he did, I guess. Yeah, um, it took him it, the mean, second half play. of the match. I, I just don't know if he practices. He, he, he's he, you know he doesn't play as pool as much. Plays a lot of snooker, and it's a completely different game. So that's yeah, someone someone uh, he will tell you. So I think that's what we picked up in the yeah, booth was yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, so, um, um, you're yeah. a more seasoned pool player, it seemed. Yeah, um, so I just managed, like, I think where I relaxed a lot quicker, I think that's that was the turning point, really. And then yeah. obviously where I'm, I'm up here all the bloody time. So, <laughs> 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 so yeah, it was good, though. It was good. And appreciate the uh, the stream and everyone watching. And, um, yeah, thanks, guys. Much you're welcome. So. Hopefully cool. next time you're on the stream, you can have a, a yeah, bigger well, challenge. Well, Josh just said that he wants a, a rematch to get the uh, chance to get the money back. So and that will be on stream, but on like an ad hoc money match day, if that's okay. cool with you. Yeah, that's um, cool. Same, I guess. Well, same amount, 200 each, and then go from there. So mm. hopefully it'll be a bit of a closer game. Um, yeah, and go from there. So. Cool. Yeah, Cheers, Simon. We just said we didn't know where he was going to go with this. Either he was going to. I was going to try and step away and like, like go back to the drawing board a little bit because he felt like he was a little bit inexperienced on the pool table or he was going to play, play one more match, not have a good result and then you never see him again. Well, I think he was saying how he plays pool. He, he hasn't really played pool properly for four years but he used to be big on the Southampton scene and played in the singles and all that um, against some top players around. Um, so it's, I think it's just the fact, it's not the fact that he doesn't play pool at all and hasn't ever played pool. He's obviously played pool in the past. He's just not practiced at it for the last four years. And uh, I think that transition from snooker to pool, if he does take it up longer, um, longer term, will be obviously beneficial for him and then per should pave the way for a better match uh, between us, I think. so. Because, I mean, I've, I've played snooker recently for the first time in, in 18 years, but I wouldn't ever go back to playing at long term. Although I had a 99 break, I was happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary 99 yeah, oh, break. Mate, I yeah. didn't realise I was videoing it. And I, uh, I, 
snooker myself on the last red and then um, only noticed when I watched back the video uh, that it was 99. Was well, gutted, uh, like, one more pot away. When I was like 17, but otherwise I've never had a cent uh, since then I haven't had a century. But mm. uh, I'll go back up there and play in a bit, probably just take a break from pool. It's a good little distraction. But, um, but no, I think getting back to the pool scene, like being in the pool scene um, a lot longer term and going to kind of events and stuff like that's the um the ideal next step i think so these money yeah. matches like they don't have to be huge but they're just a good kind of fo way to stay focused i guess for yeah a, they do force you to period, focus you know? so, yeah, yeah it's, it's good so but yeah thanks again guys much appreciated yeah thank oh, you so congratulations yeah, thanks a lot. i'll speak to you guys soon cheers Take cheers all right, well, I'll wrap this up now. Thank you, thank you, Simon Ayers, for joining us in the commentary booth. Well, thank you very much for having me. Hopefully I didn't scare too much of your audience off. Oh, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> Always a good insight as ever. So thank you for that. Cheers, thank you very much. Cheers. Well, cheers, All guys. Right. I'll just do the roundup here. You have been watching live pool from Rocket Ronnie's in Southampton. They have uh, over 30 tables of various disciplines, dartboards and live BT Sports on 10... TV screens plus the projector. They're open Monday to Saturday, 10 till midnight, and Sunday, 10 till 10. And they've got the Junior Q Sports Academy running from 10 p.m. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday mornings. If you're looking to get your juniors aged between 10 and 18 in to upgrade their Q skills, then Simon Ayers, who have you you have just appreciated on the commentary runs that he is a WPBSA accredited snooker coach so he knows what he's talking about and he knows what to do to get your juniors firing no memberships required so pop up anytime you want to play our next scheduled stream is a money match between Ben Lindsay and Matthew Harrison that will be Sunday the 3rd of April 1 p.m. and that's sponsored by TKS Envirocare and Terry Vos Painting and Decorating. So tune in then. Hopefully we'll have a match before then for you. So to find out what that will be, it should be some quarters or semis or finals of the Challenge 21. So if you like and subscribe to Rocket Rackers TV on YouTube and on Facebook, then you'll be able to find out when that's going down. the shout out for our stream sponsor QL Q Sports that's the company that Simon Ayers runs yeah, that's the company that does the snooker and pool coaching for the Junior Q Sports Academy up here in Rocket Runnies on the Saturday morning so if you're looking for some one on one adult or junior tuition or you're looking to get the juniors into the academy then get in touch with Q World Q Sports you have been watching. Oh, sorry. This is Appaday Multimedia, the channel sponsor. That's the company that brings you all of this. So if you're looking for any web streaming, creative, or social solutions, get in touch today. we will be happy to work out something. With regards to the other matches, I will um, update the results on the website later. I'll go and get them now, but we will be terminating the stream. So if you'd like to know them, those results, why don't you pop onto the website, maybe late this evening or tomorrow morning, and we'll have those results there for you. You have been watching the Money Match Day. Black Bull Pool Money Matches brought to you live from Rocket Ronnie's in Southampton. We had Jack Coop versus Neil Baker this morning in a race to 21. And we finished up with Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes in a race to 17. We had Aaron Jones and Simon Ayers as commentators for those two matches respectively. Thank you, you two, for your contributions to that. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe on the social medias and on YouTube. Give us all your love. We need your love. I hope to see you again in the next stream. Hope you all have a great weekend. Enjoy your Saturday evening. Thank you and good night.